This is part two of Train's Scripts, an ongoing series where I try to pick apart these scripts in order to figure out how they work so I can use them for things that I'm trying to make for the game. In this video, I'm still going to be working on the destination signs for this locomotive, the R46 subway car. Specifically for this video, I want to answer the question of what does this number mean? What happens if you change it? Does it matter what number it is and does the number even need to exist? Also, I'm wondering what happens if you change the name of the class. Can it really be anything you want or does it actually matter what it says? I'm going to be changing R46 O to subway car to see if that changes how the script behaves. The first thing I'm going to do is take the LCD textures and edit them in Explorer so I can remove that number and see what happens to it. I'm going to go inside the config file and then where it says desk names. Uh, one quick note, I didn't notice this when I made the last part of this video, but that number is actually the user ID number for the guy that made this object. So that explains where the number comes from, but what would happen if it's removed or changed? Just gonna check to make sure I saved it. Okay, the number has been removed. Now we're gonna submit it and see if it makes it faulty or not. It doesn't show any errors so far, so it might still work despite the number being removed. Time shall tell. When I view it in preview asset, it still appears as normal. So far, what I did doesn't appear to have affected the locomotive. The destination sign is still appearing as you would expect it to. Now, when it comes to experiments like this, you want to only make one change at a time so that if something doesn't work, you can narrow it down to what change caused the problem. But right now, I'm making the mistake of making two changes before testing it. This is going to come back to haunt me. However, the second change that I'm making is changing the name of the class to Subway Car just to see what will happen. Now, whatever you change the class to, it has to match that in the script or else it'll trigger an error. So the word R46 O in the script is also going to have to be changed to Subway Car for this to work. This is just to see if it matters what the name of the class is, or will the script still function the same way, even with a different name. There are a lot of warnings, but thankfully none of them are errors. Errors are really what you have to watch out for because they prevent the locomotive from appearing in the game. And even if it appears, it usually doesn't work correctly. But warnings usually don't cause any major issues. So far, the locomotive still appears on the track as it should. You'll notice that the destination sign isn't animating, and that's apparently because animations don't play in Surveyor anymore, probably to prevent it from lagging. Okay, so far everything seems to be functioning normally. I can still select a destination sign from the drop down menu. Hold on. It's taking a while to load because there are so many selections available. At first, I thought I accidentally soft locked the game.
You know what's funny? I've had this game for years and never thought to try to use one of the wrong destination signs just to see what it would look like. <laughs> Let's try that real quick to see what it looks like. Yeah, if you use the wrong destination sign, it doesn't appear correctly because it's not mapped correctly. So that's why it looks all messed up. You have to choose the destination signs that the locomotive was designed to use. Okay, I'm noticing that the destination sign that this locomotive comes with isn't even selectable on this list. So one of those two changes that I made earlier must have been the culprit for that. And I'm thinking I know which one. I think it had to do with removing that number that I showed you earlier. Yeah, that texture is completely gone from the list. It's not even selectable anymore. It doesn't even appear. Which means that something I did must have messed it up. Okay, I'm running a few more tests just to see exactly in which way this texture library is messed up. It looks like the texture library that this locomotive is supposed to come with is automatically selected when you place it on the ground, but it doesn't appear on this list anymore, which is interesting. Okay, I deleted that locomotive and placed another one on the track. Again, the LCD texture that the locomotive comes with is not selectable, but the other one that I downloaded is available, which I haven't edited yet. So something is amiss here. It's got to be an edit that I made to the texture library that's causing this problem. Because look, it's not selectable anymore. Okay, I placed the other R46 on the ground to see something. It looks like even the texture library that the locomotive comes with is selectable from this list when you place it on the ground. Even if the one that you're trying to select is the one that the locomotive already has selected. So, even in that situation, I should be able to see it in this drop-down menu. Oh, and look at that. When you click on under, it doesn't even show you the options. This is a very interesting glitch. In order to figure out exactly what caused it, I'm going to have to undo both of the changes that I made earlier and then only change one to see exactly what causes the problem. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the class from Subway Car back to R46 O. Don't forget to change it in the script as well, or else it'll cause a conflicting error. Okay, let's see if changing the script back to normal fixes the problem. Nope, so that wasn't the problem. So that means that the change I made to the texture library is what's causing the problem. Which probably means that the change I made to the script didn't do anything to it. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to look at the script of the other locomotive to see if it had the exact same class name. 
and it looks like it does. Okay, since I know that the removal of the number 58843 is what caused the texture library to stop working, I'm curious what's so important about the number 58843. Like, is it mentioned anywhere in the script? Or is it something related to the game scripting? Okay, I went through the whole script and the number 58843 isn't even mentioned once, so it's not related to the script. So I have no idea why that number has to exist, but since it clearly does, I'm just going to uh, write it back and see what happens. Okay, I don't know why, but for some reason, under extensions, if you don't type desk names followed by a hyphen, followed by the user ID number of the person who created this specific asset, then it won't work. That must be an in-game thing, though, because it wasn't mentioned anywhere in the script. I'm guessing that's just how the game functions. Don't question it. Just follow its rules. Okay, now when I search for the, okay, good. I can now select the individual destinations related to this texture library. And I should also be able to find it in the list of texture libraries that can be selected. I think its name was R46 LCD root texture. There it is. Okay, so that solved the problem. The problem that I created by editing it incorrectly. <laughs> Okay, now that I know what caused the texture library to stop working, I'm going to go ahead and change the class again, just to see if it breaks the script at all. If not, then that will tell me that the class can be whatever you want it to be, as long as it's the same as in the script. Okay, I'm gonna click on this locomotive. Okay, the destination signs are still working. So that had no effect on whether or not you can select a destination sign. To know if there are any other glitches related to the script, I'm gonna have to test it in driver though, because a lot of the features can only be seen in driver. The destination signs are still working, and so are the running numbers. So that should be fine. In order to test the directional headlights, I need to have at least one other locomotive attached to it. I don't have to test the doors though because the doors aren't controlled by the script, they're controlled by the in-game features. In some trains that are scripted like this, as soon as you go inside the opposite facing cab, it changes the directional headlights. But I think in this one, you actually have to start moving first for it to work.
All right, the directional headlights are still working. That means changing the class of the script doesn't affect it at all. Even though I know that changing the name of the class won't uh, affect the script, I'm still going to change it back to what it was. That way, in the future, when I change other parts of the script, and if something bad happens, it will be easier to narrow it down to what's causing it. You only want to change one thing at a time. Just to make sure I have repeatable evidence, I'm going to do some more experimentation. I'm going to take the user ID of this LCD texture and place it in the other one to see what happens. If my hunt is correct, that should stop it from being selectable in the list of destination textures. Okay, I got the user ID of this asset and I'm going to change it to the user ID of the other asset just to see what happens. If my hunt is correct, that means that this one will no longer be available in the list of destination textures. Whenever editing a train or one of its dependencies, in order to see the results of the changes, you have to delete the train from Surveyor first because the game remembers the previous version of the train and it will keep remembering it until it's deleted. Yep, just like I thought, it doesn't work anymore because it now has the wrong user ID number. Okay, I'm going to change this LCD texture back to the way it should be. I'm going to get rid of this number and put back the number that's supposed to be there. Now I noticed this one called updated LCD R46 root textures was not selectable from the list either. So I'm going to check and see if this one has the same problem. The user ID for this one should be 523903. By the way, in case I forgot to mention, the user ID is basically just the first section of your CUID ID. Well, that explains a lot. It's got the wrong number. Let's change that and see if it appears in the game. Oh, there it is. It works now. Okay, I cloned one of these destination sign textures, but I didn't update the user ID number to my own yet in order to see if it will appear in the game. I'm pretty sure it won't because of that reason. But just to make sure, I'm going to give it a special name so it's easier to look for in the list of destination signs. I'm going to name it Experiment Updated R46 LCD Root Textures. Okay, we're looking for experiment updated R46 LCD root textures. It didn't show up just as I expected. Now I'm going to actually put my number there and see what happens. In this case, it would be 14046.
And there it is. So now I know how to make the texture library at least available to select from this list. I have this huge problem where sometimes when I make experimental assets, I forget to delete them. Thankfully, this time I remembered. Now we're going to look at an entirely different type of train created from a different user to see if the destination signs are controlled in the exact same way. This is the Siemens Commino, which in my opinion is the best looking tram in the entire world. It looks like the textures for the destination sign are set up in exactly the same way as on New York City subway cars. This is set up exactly as in the New York City subway cars. The textures are all numbered and then they're assigned a name. And just like in the New York City subway cars, the desk names has the user ID of the person who created the texture library somewhere in the um, config file. I wanted to look at the script to see if it was similar to the script of the New York City subway car, but unfortunately, it said type GSE file format, which means it's encrypted. That basically means that only the person who typed the script and the game will know what it says. We'll never be able to decipher this unless we develop the ability to decrypt something. People who do this to their scripts usually don't want them copied. It's a pretty safe bet. Sadly, this means we won't be able to see if the script on this tram is similar to the scripts on the New York City subway cars. Those sounds are very nostalgic for me because I remember spending days trying to edit every single tram I downloaded from this site just to prevent that sound from repeating every time the doors are opened or closed. Okay, that's all I have for this video. In the next video, we're going to be deleting whole lines of text in the script at a time to see how it changes what happens to the locomotive.